welcome to the hindu current affairs for beginners let's start our today's session before starting our today's session first let us see answers for the questions from our previous video the first question is which among the following publishes world press freedom index the answer here is reporters without borders which is a non-governmental organization which is based in france the next question is, the government had formulated a committee headed by the Union Secretary Raju Gauva to effectively deal with which among the following in order to deal with mob lynchings. Whereas another committee was headed by Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh in order to deal with the issue of sexual harassment of women at workplace. Now let's start our today's session and these are all the topics that we are going to cover in our today's video. Our first article is related to this angel tax. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of economy. In our previous videos, we have seen about startups and angel tax. Now let us see about this in brief again. What is meant by a startup? According to a layman, startup is a new business or a new venture. But According to Government of India, for a company to be certified as a startup, it has to satisfy three conditions. The first condition is a company should be registered under in either of the three acts. One is the Companies Act of 2013 or under Limited Liability Partnership Act of 2002 or under the Partnership Act of 1932, a company should be registered under any of these three acts. And the next condition is from the date of registration, it shouldn't be beyond 10 years. Previously, it is 7 years. Now, it has got changed to 10 years. That means, for example, let us take a company. This has got registered in 2012 and now it is asking the government to provide it with a startup status. So from the date of registration it is in 2012 so it is in 2019 now. So there is 7 years gap. So it shouldn't be beyond 10 years. So this company will be granted with startup status and the last condition is from the date of registration in none of the years the company's turnover should be beyond 100 crore rupees previously it is 25 crore now it is 100 crore it is saying that from the date of registration that is from 2012 till 2019 not even in a single year the total turnover or total sales of that company should be beyond 100 crores. If a company satisfies all these three conditions, then according to the government of India, that company will be acquired with a status of startup. Now let us see about this concept known as angel tax. As we are saying that this is a startup, a new venture, whose idea might be a risky model. So let us take a person A and he wants to set up a startup and he went to a bank seeking loan for his business. But bank has said that see I am not able to understand your business model and even your business model is a bit risky to invest. I can't give you loan. So now from where this A will get the capital? It is the angel investors who could be his friends, family or relatives who will invest on the idea of Mr. A's company. A risky business model is known as an angel investors and the funds they give are known as angel funds. So what is this concept called as angel tax? According to section 56 clause 2 of income tax act this angel tax will be imposed and this was mainly brought in to fight money laundering what is meant by money laundering it is conversion of black money into a legal money we know that there is lot of black money circulating in the economy for example let us say mr a has a friend who has lot of black money 
and this person wants to convert this into a legal money so this person can come and invest in mr a's business so in order to avoid this money laundering this concept called angel tax was brought in now let us see how this angel tax will be calculated before knowing about this angel tax we should know about a concept known as fair market value and also evaluation of a company what is valuation of a company for example we have said that mr b wants to invest in mr a's company and based on some methodology he will come into a conclusion that by looking at the business model or by assessing about what could be the future of that company he might evaluate the company at some value then what about this fair market value this is according to the income tax officials they will use a methodology known as net asset value of that company based on this methodology they will derive this fair market value of that company now let us see mr b he wants to invest in mr a startup and he is expecting in return some shares so this b has used some methodology of his own and he felt that the value of this mr a startup will be 1 crore rupees and he wants to invest 50 lakh rupees for which he is expecting in return 50% of shares but according to our income tax officials who used this net asset value methodology here net asset value is nothing but the different difference between the total assets and liabilities of this startup so now they felt that the fair market value of this company is only 50 lakh rupees so to acquire 50% share for, from this company only 25 lakh need to be invested but now the company now the income tax officials will see that startup a has acquired 50 lakhs for 50% of shares which it should acquire only 25 lakh rupees so it has acquired extra 25 lakh rupees and this is called as extra or other income on which this angel tax of 30.9% tax will be imposed so this is called as angel tax so it is nothing but when the startups receive angel funding at a valuation which is higher than here the valuation of mr b is higher than the fair market value then that income will be counted and it will be taxed and that tax is known as angel tax but we have said that a company who is certified as a startup according to the government's conditions will be exempted from this angel tax and that list has to be sent by the department for promotion of industry and internal trade to the central board of direct taxes who will exempt that company from this angel tax the next article is about 44% of pm kisan beneficiaries avoid payment from the center this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of governance from this article now let us see what is this pm kisan pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi yojana in order to provide assured income support to small and marginal farmers the government has launched this pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi yojana under this program the vulnerable land holding farmers who are having cultivable land up to 2 hectares they will be provided with direct income support at the rate of 6000 rupees and this 6000 rupees will also be provided per year in three installments with 2000 rupees each and this income support will be transferred directly into the bank accounts of the beneficiary farmers in these three equal installments and around 12 crore small and marginal farmer families are expected to get benefited from this program 
this will not only provide assured supplementary income support to the most vulnerable farmer families but it will also help the families to meet their emergency needs before the harvest season and this article is also talking about a similar scheme in the state of telangana and that scheme is raitu bandhu under this raitu bandhu scheme what the telangana government is doing is they will provide investment support for farmers i said here it is going to provide investment support in the form of a grant of 4000 rupees per acre it is not per year it is per acre to every farmer in every season for the purchase of fertilizer seeds pesticides labor and to use this amount for other investments according to the farmer's choice for the crop season that is why we have said that it is investment support scheme because it takes care of the initial investment needs of every farmer our next article is useful tool this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy this article is dealing about this concept called as forex swap which we have already seen yesterday now let us see it in brief for the people who have missed this topic rbi has decided to inject long term liquidity which is of worth 5 billion dollars into the market through a concept known as forex swap that is foreign exchange swap auction with banks for the time period of 3 years that's why we have called it as a long term liquidity infusion into the market so here what the reserve bank of india is going to do is now it is going to do this auction with banks so under this program a bank will sell its us dollars to the reserve bank of india by agreeing that it will buy the same amount of us dollars at the end of the swap period and that period is this 3 years and this program is being compared with the concept known as open market operation which is a monetary tool used by the reserve bank of india to buy as well as sell the government securities in the open market but here the difference is in this swap transaction there will be only authorized dealers and the dealers will be mainly banks only banks will be allowed to deposit us dollars in exchange for rupees now the bank is giving the depositing its us dollars with rbi in return it will get same amount in rupees and bank will buy these dollars which it has deposited with rbi at the end of its swap period by paying the rupees the main objective of this program is to meet the liquidity needs of the system and this will inject rupee liquidity for longer duration through long term foreign exchange swap this forex swap will put more money in the hands of banks so that banks can use this money to lend to its customers which is resulting in more money available in the hands of people and this us dollar mobilization from banks to rbi will increase the foreign exchange reserves with the rbi it is going to reflect in the foreign exchange reserves of rbi the next article is reality of impunity rhetoric of human rights this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity from this article now let us see about an institution known as national human rights commission this is an autonomous statutory body that is created by an act of parliament in 1993 and it is the watchdog of human rights in the country what is this nhrc composed of 
it consists of a chairperson who is a retired chief justice of india he will be the chairperson of this national human rights commission and there will be one member who will be or who has been a judge of supreme court of india and another member who has been served as chief justice of a high court and two members will be appointed from the members who are having a knowledge or practical experience in matters related to human rights and along with this the chairpersons of four national commissions that is from minorities national commission minority commission scheduled caste scheduled tribe as well as women the chairpersons of all these four commissions will serve as ex officio members of this national human rights commission then who will appoint these members the chairman and the members of this national human rights commission are appointed by the president of india they are all appointed by the president of india based on the recommendations of a committee that consists of prime minister as a chairman and it consists of home minister leader of opposition from lok sabha and leader of opposition in the rajya sabha speaker of lok sabha as well as deputy chairman in rajya sabha and this committee will recommend who should be the chairman as well as members of this national human rights commission to the president of india who will appoint them and we have seen that one sitting judge of supreme court or chief justice of high court can be appointed only after the recommendations of the chief justice of india and these members are not eligible for any reappointment under the central or state government and the term is 70 years of age or 5 years from the date of appointment whichever is earlier and what about the removal process appointment is done by the president even the removal is done by the president on the grounds of bankruptcy unsound mind or if the person is sentenced to imprisonment for committing a crime or if he is engaged in a paid employment that is office of profit and the person can also be removed for any misbehavior or incapacity if supreme court inquiry finds the person guilty and the person can also resign by writing to the president then what are all the powers this national human rights commission has it has the powers of a civil court it can look into the cases if they are received within 1 year of the crime and it can recommend compensation to the victim and it can recommend the prosecution of accused but are these recommendations binding no they are not binding and it should submit a special or annual reports to the parliament as well as state legislatures along with the action that is taken on their recommendations and it should also list down what are the reasons for non acceptance of their advice the next article is for a healthy planet this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of environment this topic is all about the 6th edition of global environment outlook from the united nations environment program on the theme of healthy planet healthy people that was released recently what is this report is for world leaders they came up with paris climate deal in 2015 and this deal has promised actions it has promised actions to cut emissions to limit the global temperature rise to below 1.5 degrees centigrade but the health impacts of pollution deforestation and mechanized food chain are not properly understood 
and there is also no international agreement there is no international agreement for environment similar to this paris accord does for this climate here this paris accord is for climate but there is no international environment agreement so this global environment outlook is trying to address this gap by bringing attention of the world nations with regard to the impact of environmental problems on humans this is what is this report for now let us see what are the highlights of this report this report spoke about premature deaths here a quarter of all the premature de deaths that is 33% of all the premature deaths and diseases are mainly due to man made pollution and environmental damage and this report has noted that because of deadly smog including the emissions chemicals polluting drinking water and destruction of ecosystem which is very crucial to the livelihoods are some of the reasons for the causes of this premature deaths and the other concept which it spoke about is inequality one is premature deaths and the other one is inequality this economic outlook global economic outlook has depicted a widening gap increasing gap between this rich and poor nations the top 10% of the population across the world in terms of wealth are responsible for 45% of greenhouse gas emissions and the bottom 50% are responsible only for 13% of greenhouse gas emissions so here you can see this inequality in terms of greenhouse gas emissions but the impact of this greenhouse gas emissions is mainly on the poor nations because of over consumption pollution and food waste in the developed country is leading to hunger poverty and diseases in these poor nations and the next concept it spoke about is health it dealt about health saying that there were poor environmental conditions which will lead to approximately 25% of global disease and mortality and it has even given an example that in 2015 nearly 9 million deaths are because of these poor environmental conditions and nearly 1.4 million people die every year from preventable diseases they are dying it is not because of non preventable diseases but they are dying because of preventable diseases due to lack of access to due to lack of access to clean drinking water this is the main reason because of which people are dying so poor environmental conditions like that are resulting in diarrhea and poor sanitation is resulting in these deaths and this is related to water then what about air air pollution alone has caused 6 to 7 million premature de deaths every year and the chemicals that were pumped into the seas will cause multi generational adverse health effects the land degradation through farming and deforestation in the areas of earth which are home to nearly 3.2 billion people is resulting in land degradation and this unchecked use of antibiotics in food production it will result in drug resistant superbugs becoming the world number cause of premature death by mid century is what this report has assessed 
द नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल इज इंटीग्रेट टी बी सर्विसेज विद प्राइमरी हेल्थ सिस्टम लैंडसेट दिस आर्टिकल कम्स अंडर जी एस पेपर टू अंडर द टॉपिक ऑफ इश्यूज रिलेटेड टू हेल्थ फ्रॉम दिस आर्टिकल फर्स्ट वी शुड नो अबाउट द स्टैटिस्टिक्स रिलेटेड टू ट्यूबोक्लॉसिस इट इज सेइंग दैट आउट ऑफ टेन मिलियन न्यू ट्यूबोक्लॉसिस केसेस that were reported across the world by the world health organization out of this 2.74 million cases are from india and this is the global level measure and this is restricted to india and if we see the tb incidence in india as of 2017 it is 204 tb cases out of every 1 lakh people but the government of india has set an ambitious target to eliminate this tb by 2025 which can be achieved by integrating the tb services with primary health system but this is not being done in india in order to reduce the diagnostic delays why this is important because primary level is the first point of contact where if patients are diagnosed and treated at the primary level then it will lead to early diagnosis and it will help in cutting the transmission cycle of this tuberculosis this is why the lancet global health article is saying that india should adopt the measures to prevent tuberculosis on a population level to eliminate the disease in the future years and according to this study india can achieve a target of 57% reduction in this incidence it can redu reduce this to 57% and 72% of reduction in mortality regarding this tb can be seen only by 2035 but india has a target to completely eliminate to phase out tb by 2025 but lancet study is saying that this at not complete reduction but 57% of incidence and 72% of reduction in mortality can be done only by 2035 so india has to adopt the measures to prevent this tb on a population level and india should scale up the access to tb services for all the people who are in need and it should make use of private sector providers and provide universal access to drug susceptibility testing and as well as second line tb drugs to the people who are in need this is what is told by the lancet study the next article is finland is the happiest nation India slipped seven spots, ranks one forty eighth. This article comes under GS paper three under the topic of economy, and the subtopic here is inclusive growth and issues arising from it. From the prelims point of view, from this article, what is important for us here is what is this World Happiness Report and who releases it. This World Happiness Report is released by. the sustainable development solutions network for united nations it is this organization that releases this world happiness report the world happiness report 2019 was recently released by united nations according to this report indians are not happy in 2019 as they were happy in 2018 and in this report india ranked at 140th position now let us see about this report as we said that this report is released by sustainable development solutions network for the united nations by the united nations general assembly and this report is a landmark survey of the state of global happiness and it ranks 156 countries based on how the citizens of those countries consider themselves are happy and this report will rank the 156 countries based on six key variables that support the well-being of the citizens they are income healthy life expectancy freedom 
trust, social support and generosity. These are the parameters that support the well-being of citizens and based on these variables this index will be measured. Now let's see today's prelims questions. With regard to the forex app, consider the following. It injects long duration liquidity into the system and this rupee dollar swap will be done in the open market by RBI. The next question is world happiness report is published by which among the following. Report is without borders, United Nations Development Program, Sustainable Development Solutions Network of UN and World Bank. Try to answer these questions and post your answers in the comment box. In our tomorrow's video, we will see an explanation for these questions. Thank you.